Welcome to Electron Line. In this video, we're going to become a little bit more familiar with Stokes theorem. What we're trying to do here is just get a familiarity with it because it's kind of a strange thing. So let's try to explain what it is. Here's the equation. It says that the integral over the curve, and that would be enclosed curve, like the entire loop right here, of b dot dl, let's assume that b is a magnetic field, and dl is a small little line segment along that that circle here. Well, Stokes' theorem claims that this is equal to the surface integral of the curl of B dotted with dA, dA of course being a small little surface element, assuming that this is the area that we're concerned with. Also we know um, Ampere's law, notice that the left side of the equation is equal to the left side of Ampere's law, and we note that that is equal to mu sub naught times the current enclosed. Now let's say that we have a certain amount of current here, the current density is going to be equal to the total current through this, let's say that's a conductor, divided by the area, the cross-sectional area of that conductor. Let's take a look at the left side of the equation first and then we'll look at the right side of the equation. The left side of the equation, we can say that the integral around the curve like that of B dot dl is equal to the integral of B times dl times the cosine of the angle between the two. But now notice that both B and DL will always be in the same direction. Therefore, the angle between them is zero, and the cosine of zero is one, which means that this is equal to the integral around the curve of B dot DL. And since B is assumed to be constant along that, we can say that this is equal to B times the integral of dl, which means we simply have to integrate all the way around the curve, assuming that the radius of that is equal to r, then we can say that this is equal to b times 2 pi r, or 2 pi r b would be the integral of b dot dl. Now let's take a look at the right side. Look what's inside here. This is the curl of b. Let's get a better feel for what that is. What do we mean by the curl of b? Well, the definition of a curl, and let's write it down, the curl of B, and this is, of course, the magnetic field, well, that is equal by definition to the circulation divided by the area. Now, the question is, what do we mean by the circulation of B? And so maybe we could call it the circulation of B. Well, the circulation of B can be defined as the magnitude or the strength of B multiply times the path all the way around that circular path right there. So in other words, the circulation of B is defined as the magnitude of B, the strength of B, multiplied times the path length, all divided by the area, or the cross-sectional area. And let's see here, that would then be equal to B. And what is the path length? Well, the path length would be equal to 2 pi times the radius, 2 pi times the radius, and the area well, that would be equal to pi r squared, pi times r squared. Now let's go ahead and plug that back into the right side of the equation right here. So we get the surface integral of the curl of b, and now the curl of b is going to be equal to b times 2 pi r divided by pi r squared dotted with dA. Well, let's see here. Hmm. Before I do that, maybe I'll try something else. Maybe we'll get a better understanding when we try to do something like this. Let's try this instead. Let's just take what's inside the integral here by itself. So we have the curl of B is defined as the circulation, which is B times 2 pi r divided by pi r squared. If we now multiply both sides by pi r squared, let's do that and see what we, what we get. So we're going to take the, let's move over here, we're going to take the curl of B, multiply times the area, pi r squared, and we can say that is equal to B times 2 pi r. And notice B times 2 pi r is what we got here when we integrated the left side of that equation. Now, the curl of B times pi r squared. Hmm, isn't that the same as the integral 
of the curl of B times a small little area element because this really represents the total area, that cross-sectional area. So we should be able to say that this cannot be written as the integral, the surface integral, of the curl of B dotted with an area element, dA. Because if we integrate this dA, then we should get pi r squared, and that should therefore equal b times 2 pi r. And if b times 2 pi r is equal to this integral right here, if this is equal to the integral of b dot dl, we can then see that this is equal to this, and that rep represents Stokes' theorem. Again, what we mean here is that when we integrate along the circular path, we take the magnetic field and multiply it times dl, and then we integrate around the circular path, which is b dot dl, integrated over the path, that must equal to the curl of b, which is defined as the circulation of b divided by the area. The circulation of b is the strength of b times the path length divided by the area. If we then multiply the curl of b times the area, we get b times 2 pi r, in other words, this times the area is equal to b dot dl. And finally, if we then take the integral of the curl of b times dA, we can see that this must be equal to this times the area. And therefore, we've shown that this equals this, which means that the Stokes theorem does seem to be true. And that gives us kind of an intuitive feeling of what the Stokes theorem is. Now, in the next video, we'll share an example to actually use it and you can see how handy again this particular theorem can be for you. That's how it's done.